In this section, I'm going to be discussing the Fourier transform of periodic functions. In particular, we'll be considering matters such as how to compute the Fourier transform of a periodic function, how the periodicity property manifests itself in the Fourier transform of a function, and the relationship between the Fourier transform and Fourier series coefficient sequence of a periodic function. As mentioned earlier, the classical definition of the Fourier transform can be extended in order to handle functions that are periodic. At this point, I'd like to consider in more detail the computation of the Fourier transform of periodic functions. So suppose that we have a periodic function denoted by little x that has the fundamental period capital T and the fundamental frequency omega naught, which of course is equal to 2 pi over capital T. Before I can present the main result of this slide, I first need to introduce some additional definitions. So first of all, little x subscript capital T denotes a function, in particular the function given by this equation here. So this is a function that's equal to our original periodic function little x over a single period of this periodic function, in particular the period from minus capital T over 2 to plus capital T over 2, and then the function is zero otherwise. The second quantity I need to define is little a. This is used to denote the Fourier series coefficient sequence for our periodic function little x. Then big X is used to denote the Fourier transform of little x. And big X subscript capital T is used to denote the Fourier transform of little x subscript capital T. So with these definitions in place, I can now introduce the main result of this slide, which is these three equations given here. So let's look at each of these equations in more detail. So the first of these three equations is an equation for big X. And then the last of these three equations is also an equation for big X. So essentially we have two different equations for big X. The first of these two equations is expressed in terms of the quantity big X subscript capital T. In other words, it's expressed in terms of the Fourier transform of this function here. And then the second of these two equations for big X is expressed in terms of the Fourier series coefficients AK. So what we have here are essentially two different equations for computing the Fourier transform of little x. The first is expressed in terms of big X subscript capital T, and the second is expressed in terms of the Fourier series coefficients AK. Lastly, we have the second of these three equations, in other words, this equation here. And this equation gives us a formula for computing the Fourier series coefficient sequence A for the periodic function little x. And in particular, this Fourier series coefficient sequence is given by sampling the function big X subscript capital T at points that are evenly spaced apart by omega naught, and then dividing by capital T. So the significance of this particular equation is that it provides us with a means to compute the Fourier series coefficients of the function little x by using the Fourier transform instead of using the Fourier series analysis equation. At this point, I'd like to make a few comments about the results presented on the previous slide. The first is that the Fourier transform of a periodic function always consists of a series of impulses where the impulses occur at integer multiples of the fundamental frequency. And this follows immediately from the equation for big X that we had on the previous slide, in particular this highlighted equation here. Because if we look at what we have on the right hand side of this equation, each of the terms is a delta function, in other words an impulse, that's been shifted by an integer multiple of omega naught then scaled by a constant factor which corresponds to the 2 pi a subscript k and then these terms are all summed together. Now due to this particular fact, the Fourier transform of a periodic function is zero almost everywhere. In other words, the only places where the Fourier transform of a periodic function can be non-zero is at integer multiples of the fundamental frequency. Lastly, the Fourier series coefficient sequence for a periodic function can be computed using the Fourier transform instead of the Fourier series analysis equation. And this comes from this particular equation here that we saw on the previous slide that I've highlighted. Here we can compute the Fourier series coefficient sequence A by sampling the function big X subscript capital T at integer multiples of the fundamental frequency omega naught and then scaling by a factor of 1 over T. At this point, I'd like to consider some examples that make use of the results from this and the previous slide. 
and to begin with I'd like to consider example 6.20. In this example, we're given two functions, little x1 and little x2, with the corresponding Fourier transforms big X1 and big X2 respectively. And we're told that big X1 has the graph shown in figure A, so this graph here. And we're told that big X2 has the graph shown in figure B, in other words, this graph here. And we're asked to determine whether the functions little x1 and little x2 are periodic. So really what's of interest here is whether these functions have Fourier transforms that have this particular form that I've highlighted here. So if we look at the graph in figure A, in other words the graph of big X1, clearly this graph is of the form that's given by this particular equation here. In other words, it has the form given by this right hand side. What we have are a bunch of delta functions that are shifted by integer multiples of the same value, omega naught, or in this case omega naught is equal to two and then they're scaled by various different amounts and then summed together. So the graph that we have in figure A, in other words the function big X1, it does have this form here therefore this does correspond to a periodic function and since omega naught is equal to 2 this would correspond to a function which has period pi so little x1 must be periodic with period pi. On the other hand if we look at the graph in figure B, in other words the graph of big X2 Clearly this graph does not correspond to a series of impulses. In other words, it doesn't have the form given by this particular equation here. Therefore, the conclusion we draw is the function big X2 can't correspond to a function little x2 that's periodic. Therefore, we conclude that little x2 must not be periodic. The next example I'd like to consider is example 6.21. In this example, we're given the function little x with the fundamental period capital T equals 2 as shown in this particular figure here. And we're asked to use the Fourier transform to find the Fourier series representation of little x. To begin, we're going to write an equation for a function little y that's defined to be equal to the function little x between plus and minus capital T over 2 and is 0 elsewhere. In other words, we're going to write an equation for a function little y that's equal to little x between this point here at minus big T over 2, which is the point minus 1, and this point here at big T over 2, which is the point plus 1. And between minus 1 and plus 1, clearly little x is just equal to the rectangular function. In other words, we have this relationship here. And we know that we can find the Fourier series coefficients for the function little x by simply taking the Fourier transform of little y and then sampling the Fourier transform. So in other words, we've been able to write the function little x in terms of little y, where little y essentially represents a single period of our original periodic function little x. And we generate little x from y by just repeating little y every two units along the axis, which will yield a periodic function with period 2. So now we're going to take the Fourier transform of little y. So if we take the Fourier transform of little y, little y is given by this particular equation here. So taking the Fourier transform gives us this highlighted equation here. And then we need to simplify this Fourier transform, the Fourier transform of the rectangular function. And to do this, we can look this up in our Fourier transform table, which gives us sinc of omega over 2. So now what we can do is we can take this Fourier transform big Y and we can sample it using this particular equation here to find the Fourier series coefficients for little x. So the fundamental frequency, which is what's represented by omega naught here, this is just equal to pi because the fundamental period is 2, so this corresponds to a fundamental frequency of pi. So we can substitute pi for omega naught. And then for Y, we substitute the Fourier transform that we got above here, which was the sink of omega over 2. So doing this substitution, this gives us this next line here. And then we can substitute, of course, the omega naught equal to pi, which gives us this last line here. So we have our Fourier series representation of little x, where the Fourier series representation is given by this equation here, where the ck, in other words, the Fourier series coefficients, are given by this particular equation here. The last example that I'd like to consider is example 6.24.
In this example, we're given the periodic function little x that's defined by this particular equation here, where the function little x naught is defined by this formula here. And capital A is a real constant. And then we're asked to find the Fourier transform big X of the function little x. Before proceeding to solve this problem, I just want to note that the functions little x and little x naught are shown plotted in the figure in the top right, so this figure here. The function little x is periodic with period capital T, and the function little x naught is equal to the function little x between minus capital T over 2 and plus capital T over 2, and is zero elsewhere. So in effect, the function little x naught corresponds to a single period of the periodic function little x. So now let's proceed to solving the problem at hand. To begin, we take the Fourier transform of this particular equation here, which fairly trivially gives us this first line in our solution. And now we need to focus on simplifying this Fourier transform. So here we have the Fourier transform of a periodic function, where the function little x naught corresponds to a single period of that periodic function. So in order to compute this Fourier transform, what we're going to do is we're going to use this equation that's written in the annotation to the side here, where omega naught corresponds to the fundamental frequency of our periodic function, and big X subscript capital T corresponds to the Fourier transform of a single period of our periodic function. So if we substitute this formula in for this right-hand side here, this gives us the next line, which is this line here, and then what remains to be done is we need to find big X naught, in other words, the Fourier transform of little x naught. So to do this, we observe that little x naught is given by this equation here. So the Fourier transform big x naught is given by this formula, where we now need to simplify this Fourier transform. Now the first thing we can do is we can use the linearity property to pull this constant a outside of the Fourier transform operation, and this gives us this next line. And then we can use a Fourier transform table to look up this particular Fourier transform, which gives us this next line, which is the expression for big X naught. So we can now take this expression for big X naught and substitute it for big X naught in this equation here. And when we do this, this gives us the equation on this line. And then lastly, we can substitute for omega naught in this equation the value 2 pi over capital T which gives us this last line, which is our formula for big X, which is what we're trying to find in this particular problem.